Greetings friends, my name is John Gabriel and this <coughs> is the new calculus channel. <coughs> Excuse me. So today I'm going to produce a little video explaining uh, some of the key concepts which were inspired by a comment in one of my latest YouTube videos. So let's begin. Now, uh, that's not the question. Uh, but this is so some person commented here on the fact that he did not understand the integral of fx so you see he didn't fully grasp it but he understands the derivative so I'm going to show you now that when you use uh, the new calculus or even the mainstream calculus the mean value theorem makes it possible to find the area under a curve and, and over a certain interval because of a telescoping sum uh, and you can find the proof of that in these links okay uh, but I'm, I'm going to show you everything right now as we go along so <clears throat> If you have this blue curve here, which is actually the function 1 over x, and I purposely called it f prime of x, as you see up here, because in the mean value theorem, you're not the, the, uh, the, the arithmetic mean is not the arithmetic mean of f, but of f prime. So, for example, when you see the mean value theorem, like I've highlighted here, where I say f prime of c, this is finding the arithmetic mean of all the infinitely many y-ordinates under this blue curve, okay? And it's given by this little line here, from the x-axis to the point b. That is the arithmetic mean, okay? And what are we actually doing when we, we're calculating the air, this shaded blue area? we're actually turning the shaded blue area into a rectangle. So we're moving this part above the dotted line into this white segment here, as you see in this diagram. So we're shifting this tiny little blue part into the yellow part, okay? And then we have a nice rectangle, and we know the height of it, which is given by the arithmetic mean, this, this little distance here, up to B. In other words, the Y coordinate to be multiplied by the interval width, which is 3, which is also an arithmetic mean because all the horizontal lines in this little quadrilateral, D, C, and the points 1, 0, and 4, 0, it has an arithmetic mean which is equal to 3, okay? So it doesn't matter how many of these you add up, it also gives you the arithmetic mean. And so it's a product of two arithmetic means, right? And so... Um, we know that the length of the arithmetic mean is 0 0.4621, okay? And that kind of makes sense because it's round about there, right? That's not 0 0.5, it's under 0 0.5, round about there, okay? And that, my dear friends, is pretty much it. There is no use of ill-formed concepts such as Riemann sums, limits, and all the nonsense that you learn in mainstream calculus, which is a very flawed formulation, has always been flawed. There's never been a rigorous mainstream calculus formulation. It's one big fraudulent formulation. So in this last video of mine, I showed you that it was I who solved the tangent line problem, not Newton or Leibniz or any of the lackeys and fools who came after them. They didn't understand calculus. But I do, and I'm showing you why it really works. It's infinity and limits has nothing to do with calculus. And one thing that mainstream academics have never realized is that you cannot do calculus on functions that are not smooth. The methods of calculus apply only to smooth functions. And guess what? Those are the ones that we use in just about, not just about, in everything where we use calculus. Okay, so for example, talking about the derivative of the absolute value at the point x is equal to zero is nonsense because it's not smooth at x is equal to zero. Okay, so 
And the mean value theorem, again, doesn't care about uh, inflection points. So if you, for example, have an inflection point, uh, calculating the area or the mean value is not going to affect uh, your calculations uh, where the inflection point is. So if you have, for example, a y ordinate as an inflection point, it won't affect the fact that all the other the arithmetic mean of all the other y-ordinates is actually equal to the arithmetic mean. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So that's pre pretty much it. And if you want to, uh, if you ask the question, well, what happens if you don't have a primitive function? So, for example, you, you, you don't know f, but you know f prime of c, which is always the one that you're finding the area under. Okay, so in this case here, you're finding the arithmetic mean of f prime of c. Uh, not f, okay, but you're using the boundaries of f to find it. Uh, what do you do in that case? Well, in the mainstream calculus, you normally use numeric integration, right? So that means Simpson's method, trapezoidal, and any of the other methods that you can use to <coughs> to find areas. Okay, those are all, and you can show that even the bogus Riemann sums are actually a uh, product of two arithmetic means. In the mainstream calculus. That's not hard to do. Now, finally, if you want to be able to uh, do systematic integration, you'd need to understand the Gabriel polynomial, which is a very advanced concept in mathematics built on Newton's interpolation polynomial, giving you a fixed number of terms, uh, which can vary depending on the number of derivatives, and that enables you to uh, produce areas and volumes exactly expressed in a fixed number of terms. So it's interesting because it has many other properties, which I'm not going to discuss here. And since I'm out of breath, and I think I've covered everything, I'm going to stop here. So <coughs> this is the New Calculus Channel. My name is John Gabriel. Till next time, friends, goodbye.